talked a lot about the Black Lives Matter movement. I, for one, have talked a lot about how I support them so long as they're peaceful and they're peaceful protests. But one thing we should never support is violence in any way, shape, or form, whether that's violence with a police officer or against the police. And the police have had to deal with a lot of violence taking place on our streets in the last few weeks, and sadly, it hit home right here in Las Vegas. During a Black Lives Matter protest, don't believe that this was a Black Lives Matter protester, had nothing to do with it, but we had an innocent, brave officer, 29-year-old Shay Michelonis, who was shot from behind in the neck right on the strip. He is now recovering at UMC. This was a, made national news. It was a big story, and it is amazing that he's still holding on and from what I understand, uh, some improvements, which is really, really good news. And as we want to support our citizens and we want to support the Black Lives Matter movement, you have to support the majority of the men and women in blue that are heroes that do a really, really good job. And uh, Shay McAlonis is, is certainly a perfect example of that. Joining us right now on the line to talk about Shay is Lieutenant Eric uh, Lloyd. He is a former Metro, uh, I believe he's a Metro police officer, Lieutenant Eric Lloyd, and the president of the Injured Police Officers Fund. Uh, Lieutenant Lloyd, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Hey, what's I'm up, good. Man? I'm good. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. Sure. I, I guess the first question, and, and it's what everybody wants to know, can you give us any type of update on Shay? How is he doing? What's the latest? I can, and and I am still uh, an officer with Metro. Just to gotcha. to, to com confirm gotcha. that, but uh, I, I got an update from the family, and I actually just talked to Shay's um, father, uh, stepfather, and uh, so I'm going to read what he posted, and this is from the family. Right. Um, he is on a ventilator and will be for the foreseeable future, or perhaps the rest of his life. Um, he's still very critical, and therefore he's still at UMC trauma. Um, he is awake, and he appears to recognize his family. Wow! So that's that's per, that's that's a good update for uh, for right now for his condition. Wow! That I mean that, that I guess there's some positives and negatives to take away from that. Thank God he could still you know recognize his family and, and acknowledge that. But at the same time, that has to be really rough news for his family that he he could be on a ventilator for the rest of his life. That is that is yeah. really tough. That is really really tough to take. But yeah, he's fighting. I agree. He's a he's a fighter. Obviously, this 29 year old is a fighter. Definitely. So, well, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, boy, we, we, we hope that that's not the case. We hope that he can continue to improve and, and get better. But uh, thank God he's able to be there with his family. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about the circumstances that took place that night. And I know there's only so much you can talk about and so much, you know. But as far as we know, the man that is in custody right now, uh, he's claiming, reports that he is claiming that he was firing his gun just to disperse some of the protesters. I don't know why he would do that. That's a crime. Mm -hmm. Do you know about that? Have you heard about that? Because I've heard two conflicting reports, reports that this guy just went behind Officer Shea and shot him intentionally, and then other reports that this guy was just waving around his gun trying to disperse the protesters. What can you tell us? What do you know? Unfortunately, I can't tell you anything. Uh, it's an active, ongoing investigation. Um, I do know about the investigation, but like I said, it, due to the uh, uh, investigation status, um, I can't comment about anything. Totally un understood. That. Totally understood. So over the weekend, uh, there was a Pray for Shea parade. It made its way to UMC to help with the healing process. I understand that uh, he's had a lot of support, and rightfully so, he should. And while I say, officer, that uh, anyone who peacefully protests, Black Lives Matter, for example, they have a right to do so, and I support the, the majority of those people and what they're doing, those that are not violent, I think it is just as important to support law enforcement as the majority of what you guys do for a living. You guys are heroes. You risk your lives to protect and serve. Can you make that point and, make a, 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 and, and, and just discuss a little bit about what you guys have to go through on a regular basis to protect the citizens of Las Vegas? Uh, you, you're making a great point. Um, we, every police officer I know supports every citizen's right to, to protest um, what they feel is an injustice. And I can tell you that every single police officer that I've talked to or know uh, is disgusted with what happened in Minneapolis. Um, we, I just can't believe that one officer has been you know, responsible for everything that has happened since then. Um, that being said, uh, we we are trying to keep the peace here in town, uh, in Vegas. We're trying to keep citizens safe. We're trying to keep property safe. 
and uh, and that's you know that's a challenging job. No question, no question. Can you just tell us that night when you first heard of uh, this this shooting uh, when, when Shea was shot? What was the first thing that entered your mind and the emotions that just somebody that that knew him? The emotions that an officer, a fellow officer, has to go through when you learn that one of your own was shot. Uh, it's extreme shock. Um, you're, you're numb, instantly numb. Um, you can't believe it. Um, it's the last thing you ever want to hear. Um, and and I've, been, I've been an officer for, uh, I'm a few months shy of my 30 years. And, wow. Uh, so I've, I've dealt with that a lot in my, my career. Um, but it's, it, it never is easy. It's never something that you can just, uh, you know, blow off without thinking long and hard about it. Um, sure. You're just sure. feeling for, for his family, uh, for his loved ones, for his friends. Um, I, I feel for the officers that were next to him, um, the, you know, the shock and pain that they're going through. Um, it's, sure. just, it's just a, a real bad situation. It, it's just a real numbing effect to you as, yeah, a, as nobody, an officer. To, absolutely. To just think that, hey, somebody's, somebody's targeting us. Absolutely, and, and nobody should have to go through that, and uh, it's a horrible situation. Would you agree with me on this sentiment that the majority of the protesters are peaceful and they just want change? At, just as I say, the majority of police officers are great people. I mean, I just said it the other day, officer. I was in a restaurant the other day. I see four officers, Metro cops, sitting at a table. I went up to them. I shook their hands, and I said, thank you for what you guys do. Uh, we appreciate what you do, and I'm sorry for what you guys are having to go through. And I saw the look in their eyes and a little bit of surprise, and I saw how thankful they were that I went up to them and I did that, and they were very appreciative. And I, I try to tell people to do that to an officer every day because while officers have a responsibility to have better relationships with the citizens, citizens also have a responsibility to do the same and show respect to officers. I think it should happen on both sides, and I try to tell people to do that every day. What does that mean to you when somebody goes up to you and, and says something like that? Well, I appreciate you saying that. Um, it, it, we do appreciate it, um, absolutely. And um, sometimes you get a little embarrassed, but we really do appreciate it um, being acknowledged uh, for the job that we're trying to do. Um, you know, 99% of the cops I know got into this profession to help people. Um, that's all we right. want to do. We want to make their life better and do what we can to, to help them and their families and, and keep law and order. So sure. That's, sure. that's our job. So we do appreciate it when we get acknowledged. Yeah, and, and you deserve that. I want to ask you this. You've been doing this for, as you said, around 30 years. So you're a perfect person to ask this question. Have you ever been in a situation where you saw a police officer was not acting properly? And I guess I'm going to go to that correlation, and I know it might be hard for you to comment on. If you were in that situation where you saw an officer, in this case Officer Shea in Minneapolis, putting his knee over somebody's neck, uh, and, 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 and I don't care what the – regardless of color of skin or race, what do you do in a situation like that? What is the protocol if you see a fellow officer that might be doing something that you consider to be wrong? In this example, somebody pleading for his life saying, I can't breathe, and then that officer uh, keeping the knee over that individual's neck for, for five, six, seven, eight minutes – What's the protocol? Have you ever seen anything like that? Have you ever been in a situation where you had to overrule somebody? No, not, not me personally. I've never been in that situation. But I can tell you that it's the policy of the Metro Police Department that we do not allow that. We don't condone that, and we are to immediately stop that action. Um, I, I Personally, I just I, I can't understand why somebody would do that. Um, and, and no, we would not let that happen. Um, and, and that has been within our department for years, um, that, that duty to intervene, that duty to stop an officer who is going beyond what he should be doing. And, and if you look at you, you make a great point about how you know you don't you don't condone that in your in your department. Well, Minneapolis Police Department actually does condone and and does accept uh, knee to neck or, or those type of uh, restraint techniques. And they're, they're one of the only police departments in the country that does that. I, you, you mentioned how you know the, the actions of one police officer, Derek Chauvin, have, have created this this massive just uh, you know chain effect that that that's taken place. And I've seen a couple of situations where not just a police department, but also a city has sued the Minneapolis Police Department because of what's taking place. Do you think that that's going to happen across the country? Because a lot of these, as as a police officer, are are police officers all over the United States just thinking to themselves, 
this one th- this guy made this giant ridiculous over the top abuse of power mistake and now we're all paying for it you said it perfectly um i i hope it doesn't happen but uh definitely some change needs to happen in that town in that police department um and i think we're going to see that um but i was i was wondering guys if i could talk about Shea and and how we absolutely to Shea before before absolutely. we run out of time was absolutely okay. Be- before absolutely. before you give that information out and by the way I was absolutely planning on doing that Ops, can okay you, <laughs> can you abs absolutely can you talk a little bit about Shea just as the individual for people that didn't ever get a chance to meet him or spend time around him before we give that information on how to help him okay can you can you comment a little bit about just him his character a little bit about uh, his life and, and, and just share that with everybody um, first of all I did not have the pleasure of ever meeting Shea personally um, but everything that I've learned um, since this tragic event happened uh, is that he is an outstanding uh, person an outstanding man uh, an outstanding young officer. He's been on about four years. Um, his, uh, both his parents, his mother and his father, are uh, retired Metro. His stepfather is retired Metro. Um, he's got good genes, uh, was raised right, and um, I, think, I don't think there's a, a better officer on Metro that we could be proud of. Yeah, well said. He's certainly a hero. So if people do want to get involved, and I know that there was a, a parade you know, the, over the weekend, and I'm sure there will be plenty of other events down the road to, to raise money for him and his family uh, for, to support him. But uh, how, give out that information. How do people help this family and help Shea get through this? So the Injured Police Officers Fund has established two bank accounts. Um, one is at Wells Fargo Bank, and the other is at Nevada State Bank. Uh, the reason why we do two bank accounts is is – uh, we have, we've had a long 30-plus year relationship with Nevada State Bank. It's our local bank. We always bank through them. But we also have added Wells Fargo uh, because it's nationally. It's, it's throughout the United States, so it makes it easier um, for people to make that donation. So that's the, the reason for two accounts. Um, we have those two accounts. Um, you can walk in or, or make arrangements to, to donate to those accounts. We also have our website. Um, which is uh, www.ipof for Injured Police Officers Fund. Dot Vegas. So ipof. Dot Vegas. Uh, very easy to remember. Uh, you can make donations uh, through PayPal or through credit cards on that site. Um, and uh, those are the, the the three main ways that you can do it. Um, we are planning an event this Thursday. I wanted to let you guys pretty much sure. let you guys be the first to know. Um, so June 11th, this Thursday, from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m., uh, we're going to have a collection gathering at uh, Sahara and Jones. Uh, so we're, we're getting the specific corner there at Sahara and Jones. But in the past, uh, when, uh, when Sergeant Henry Prendes was shot and killed and also right. officers Beck and Soldo, we did yep. a similar type collection gathering where yep. um, we have a driveway uh, people in their cars, they can remain in their cars for social distancing. They can pull up. Um, they can give a donation if they would like, or they could give us words of encouragement for Shea, whatever they would like to do. Um, they can drop that off to us and then continue driving out. So they don't have to get out of their That's cars. Awesome. Yep. They don't have to approach anybody. We'll come to you and, and accept that. that I promise you I promise you that we will be there for that on Thursday. I will absolutely drop by there. Awesome. And uh, I, I, I can put, promise you we're going to put all that information on our social media, on our Twitter page, so people can help this family. Uh, Lieutenant Lloyd, thank you for doing uh, a great job, not just as, as a Metro cop for, as you said, uh, around 30 years in service to the community, but thank you for spreading the word on Shea. We all absolutely. need to know we all need to know about him and, and, and the officer uh, that he was and uh, the person he is. And uh, let's just pray and hope for his family and friends that uh, he's able to continue to recover slowly but surely. Uh, I can't even imagine the pain and the suffering that he and his family have been going through. But uh, you're doing a great job, Lieutenant, uh, you and your staff. Thank you so much for coming on our show and spreading the word. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for letting me come on and, and spread that word. Thanks. Absolutely. We'll see you Thursday out there. Yeah, Thank you, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. That's uh, Lieutenant Eric Lloyd, Metro Police, president of the Injured Police Officers Fund. Boy, that's a punch to the gut right there when you hear that this poor kid. I mean, that's what he's 29 years old. 29, okay, yeah. His whole life ahead of him. 
and his life will never be the same. He's going to have to be on a ventilator. for the, When he said on a ventilator, I was thinking, okay, maybe he'll get off it in a few months. Right. For the rest of his life, he that means he he'll never say, be able to breathe on his he own. He didn't say that's a guarantee. He said it might be. It might be the rest of his life. Well, And he can recognize his parents, so if he does have brain damage, it's not. That's a, that's great. I mean, th- that's, that's that's important. Pr- that's pretty impressive that, that he, he's able to re- recognize his parents. But, but obviously his life has completely changed. The fact that doctors are telling his family that there's a chance that he, he might not be able to ever breathe again on his own is, is just horrible news. You never want to hear news like that. Uh, thoughts and prayers to him and his family. We hope he is able to get better and recover. I'm sure it will be a long road to recovery.